Dear friends, several of the students have asked a particular question in uh, last 2-3 uh, days. So, I am just uh, addressing that and it is basically what happens if you have a superconducting coil or ring and then a magnet is moved in and out. This is the standard Faraday experiment we do and uh, the only difference here is that the coil is a superconducting coil. So basically you have to understand uh, several things. Suppose you have this coil or ring, superconducting ring and then you have a magnet and that magnet is moved. Now the first thing you must understand is that when a magnet moves, the magnetic field due to the magnet changes as a function of time at any point in the space. Okay, so if I have this magnet and if I move this magnet, what I am doing? I am changing the magnetic field here. I am changing the magnetic field here. I am changing the magnetic field here and so on. And this changing magnetic field creates an electric field, which we call induced electric field. And it is this induced electric field and the rate at which this uh, magnetic field is changing, they are related to that uh, Faraday's law. Okay. Now, the equation, the Faraday's law equation generally is written in an integral form. If you have a, a closed part and then uh, you calculate what is this B dot dA, this is the flux, this is called flux through this area bounded by this closed path. Okay, so DDT of that, DDT of that with a negative sign is equal to integration E dot dA. Now, this is the central equation and it has to be understood very well. What is this electric field? This electric field is the field which is being created by this changing magnetic field and it is at the site of this path, this closed path that we have chosen. So you have to choose a direction also to identify what is this DL. This is the direction. Here this is the direction. Here this is the direction, here this is the direction and then E dot DL, integration over this closed path, that is the left hand side. And the right hand side is minus D dt of B dot DA and this DA is a small area vector um, in this uh, that, uh, surface which is enclosed by this closed path and this area vector can also have a direction towards us or towards uh, the other side, towards this side or towards that side, how you see this orientation and this arrow and direction of that are related. You have to define your positive direction of this area vector and this positive direction of area vector and this arrow on this path, they are also related. Right hand rule. So if you calculate this E dot DL on this path along this, along this curve and you calculate this B dot DA on this area bounded by this closed curve, then this is the relation which is known as Faraday's law. If the electric field is not produced by the changing magnetic field but by the charges situated here and there, then you don't have any DBDT. And then this is also zero. This is also zero and we define potential function, potential difference and so on so on. Now the important point is this law does not need a material loop here. Even if you don't put anything and geometrically you draw a curve, even then this equation holds. 
right and in fact this equation is for that geometrical path only you can put a coil you can put a material but then uh, this equation pertains to this electric field produced by the changing magnetic field so if i am moving my magnet okay then uh, no matter whether i put a coil or not the electric field is created there so that point must be understood very well now coming back here this is superconductor okay now superconducting materials are very 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 special Hmm, they are perfect diamagnet and the mechanism of uh, current going in that uh, superconducting material is very very different the whole solid state physics is different but the result that is important for us is that in a superconducting material in the material in the material you don't have electric field electric field is always zero okay in uh, a normal conductor we say that electric field is zero in electrostatic situation if the charges are stationary the electric field is not varying with time in that case the electric field in any normal conductor will be zero now superconductor is special that even if there is a current the electric field is zero okay the electric field inside that uh, material is zero even if there is a current now no in for normal conductor we say j is equal to sigma e and all that so if uh, you have a electric field is uh, at some place in the material then you have a current density at that point in the material so that is ohms law j equal to sigma e this is the conductivity <laughs> so this equation should not be used for saying superconductors the mechanisms are very very different it's not uh, free electrons and those mean free paths it's not that mechanism but if you do use this and say that this conductivity is infinite so for a finite current you must have electric field zero so in the superconductor the electric field is always zero in a normal conducting circuit circuit also this kind of circuit this kind of circuit also when we use ohm's law we simply say that okay there is a potential difference from here to here but no potential difference from here to here right when you use kirchhoff loop law for the simple circuit where is the simplest possible circuit you do need a source and you do need something to close that so this kind of circuit that we we study in our middle school level uh, there also we say that there is a potential from r into y but when we go from here to here we we don't say any potential difference that means we assume that there is no electric field here but the current is here <laughs> so we do use these things even in our normal circuits but never less we will use this fact that in the superconducting material electric field is zero even if there is a current okay so now now let's come here now, this is the loop and now you have a material here, superconducting material here and the faraday's law is here faraday's law is here so i take this loop which is going inside this material this path this geometrical path inside this material like this so i do the integration since electric field is zero everywhere here 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 this e dot dl is zero and therefore that uh, minus ddt of b dot dl must be zero right this is zero so this should also be zero <laughs> but the magnet is is uh, being moved all okay? right and therefore there should be a magnetic flux and that should change in time therefore this should not be zero blah blah but important difference this like this magnetic field here this magnetic field here and this electric field here they are related 
this E is is due to this DVD, due to the magnet. This is due to the moving magnet, right? The magnet which is moving. It is this electric field here. And the magnetic field is there. Now here this is the net. This is the net electric field. It is not electric field due to the moving magnet. It is not electric field due to the magnet. Now we are saying that look here the electric field is zero, is zero. It is a superconducting material. Whatever you do outside, the electric field there is zero. So this is a net resultant electric field. Therefore, this has to be the net resultant magnetic field. So it contains two parts. It contains, contains two parts. One is because of the magnet. B because of the magnet, moving magnet. And plus, if this is the only magnetic field, if this is the only magnetic field and it is changing, then this cannot be zero. Right? But it has to be zero. It has to be zero. And therefore, there is yet another magnetic field coming in and that is coming in from the current. That is coming in from the current. You know Lenz law, even for normal conductors. The current in the loop will have a direction so that the magnetic field which is being created due to the current in the loop, current in the loop, that will oppose the change in the flux. If the flux is increasing in the magnitude, then the magnetic field due to the current in the loop will be opposite to the applied magnetic field direction. But uh, if the flux is decreasing in magnitude, then the magnetic field due to the current will be in the direction of the original field. So that is there. Now for superconductor, since it is a, its whole structure is that, this opposition is complete. In a normal conductor, you, it, lens look only gives the direction, but it's never complete. It tries to oppose, but still the flux is changing. Right? In superconductor, this opposition is complete. You have a current. You have a current here. And an appropriate current in appropriate direction at uh, different instants. So that at any instant, the flux due to the current, the flux due to the current and flux due to your magnet, shaking magnet, the total must be same. No defibility, no electric field, ferret law is satisfied.